We're learning more and more about the dangers of Johnson & Johnson's talcum powder, and the latest news is that the company was specifically marketing the product towards lower-income Americans. Now, the talcum powder in the company's products has been linked to ovarian cancer in women, and the company knew about this. So let's check in with attorney David Haynes to discuss the Johnson & Johnson talcum powder lawsuits. So, David, this talcum powder story with Johnson & Johnson uh, it's been out for about six months now, but it, it absolutely is not getting the kind of coverage that it deserves. Many people out there have no idea that this talcum powder or talcum-based products from Johnson & Johnson have been linked to cancer. Uh, we've had two court rulings in favor of plaintiffs on this issue. Uh, give us a you know kind of a rundown of what we now know about Johnson & Johnson's talcum powder products. Yeah, I mean, th this is one of the uh, most well-known household products, of course, that people have uh, been familiar with for decades, if not generations, such as uh, Shower to Shower and uh, the Johnson uh, Baby product, Baby Powder products. Uh, a lot of women are using this. A lot of women are using this for, you know, feminine hygiene issues, other just regular use. Talc is um, a, a mineral which actually contains uh, magnesium, sulfate, and oxygen, and, in, and also includes asbestos, but it was uh, always a thought to not be cancer-causing agent. But as it turns out, Johnson & Johnson has had knowledge for decades of these concerns and the link between talcum powder, their specific product that they were marketing as incredibly safe and good for everyone. And they've known about the link between talc and cancer, but they have never uh, made it public and they've never made their consumer aware of the potential risk and there've been no warnings on the product. So as we've, some studies have begun to come out and they're showing a very direct link between the use of talcum powder and ovarian cancer and that the risk for those uh, women who are using it for a genital application is uh, the ovarian cancer risk is increased by about 40%. And so we have, you know, tens of thousands of cases a year of women who have ovarian cancer, if they're talcum powder users, it very well may have been caused by this product and they're not aware of it. And, you know, what, what is so frightening about this issue is, you know, essentially from birth, I think everybody who's, who's had a child, you know, in the last 30 years has probably at some point had a bottle of Johnson & Johnson uh, baby powder in their home. And so, you know, we, we start putting this on, on children, you know, young girls and young boys from, from the day they're born almost. And so then they, they, they grow up, you know, they continue to use it in different forms. And, and as you said, it's not just through, you know, for feminine hygiene, it's general use. If you put it under your arms, if you use it, you know, anywhere where you feel you need it, it still increases the risk of cancer um, by 30%. For, for, for regular use and by 40%, as you pointed out, uh, when used as a feminine hygiene product. So, you know, this is essentially not safe at, at all, really, for any kind of use because it's going to increase your risk of cancer. And that's what we're, we're finding out now. And that, uh, as I'm to believe, is what the juries agreed with. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And obviously, consumers need to make a risk benefit analysis. And when you're looking at what the potential benefit is from talcum powder, which is a, a potentially a, you know, a comfort sort of issue to reduce sweating and chafing and things like that versus the risk, which is cancer and you know, which can of course be fatal. Uh, consumers need to have that information so that they can make that analysis on their own. And many experts of course are coming out with their advice, which is simply don't use it because the benefits certainly don't even begin to outweigh the potential risk. And as you talk about using it from birth, I mean, we. We use this uh, on both of my daughters when, when they were young as well and not knowing, but the fibers from the talc can travel up um, through the ute uterus and into the ovaries where it causes ovarian cancer. So uh, very disconcerting. You look at some of the marketing tactics potentially uh, that are very concerning as well. They had a drop in sales in the early 90s at Johnson & Johnson and began to market this specifically to African-American and Latino populations of women, uh, believing that they were you know, a, a better source for marketing this. It is very popular among African-American women to use as well. And so as the memos and the internal documents from Johnson & Johnson have come to the light of day, we've had sunshine shined on this in these two cases. We've had two very significant verdicts around the country, both of which included very large punitive damages claims 
at which the jury, both juries both times have been upset clearly at what Johnson & Johnson knew and failed to reveal to these plaintiffs and to the public at large. And so we've had uh, the first verdict of $72 million, $62 million of which was punitive damages. And the second verdict was $55 million, 50 of which was punitive damages. And the jury certainly didn't return those verdicts lightly. Those are uh, pretty extraordinary results. And they're based upon this very large, sophisticated company, Johnson & Johnson, not sharing the information because they don't want to put warnings on their on the bottles. And, and it is interesting. I mean, we're looking at, a, I, I think there's at least 1,200 more lawsuits against the company that have already been filed. And when we talk about the fact that tens of thousands of women every year develop ovarian cancer, uh, you know, a, and some of them may not know about the link between the use of powder. And then we get into, as you just pointed out, the, the marketing of it. I mean, Johnson & Johnson, when they ramped up this marketing towards African-American and Latino women, they knew at that time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but they knew at that time that it was linked to cancer. Yes, the, this, they have had this information. They're the experts, of course. It's their product. Johnson Johnson is a huge company. It seems like, you know, uh, we're regularly talking about that particular company with defective products that are on the market unfortunately, and their safety culture there internally with their scientists and their epidemiologists at Johnson & Johnson, they really need to be taking a look at that. They've, had, they've known of this information for decades. It preceded this marketing blitz to the African-American community in the 1990s, yet uh, they've concealed it because uh, if this information comes out, of course, sales will be uh, drastically affected. And this is a cash cow for Johnson & Johnson. It's a very serious issue. Obviously, 20,000 women diagnosed annually with ovarian cancer, and over 15,000 women die annually from ovarian cancer. And, uh, you know, still the information is not out there to the public that this, in fact, could have been the cause of their cancer or their loved one's cancer. It's very sad. Is, is there anything that we know about the uh, biopersistence of talcum powder? Um, for example, if a, if a woman had used it but she stopped using it five, ten years ago, uh, has the does the risk decrease or or does it kind of accumulate? Um, you know, essentially, what do women need to know, and, and do they need to go get checked out? And how often should they be checked out? Do we know anything about that? Yes, I, I think the answer is that we're now getting some initial scientific studies that are in. A lot more studies do need to be done. We are establishing the link. I think that the science is showing that long-term users. Uh, are definitely at greater risk. As we talked about, there's a slightly elevated risk as well for those uh, women who are using it for more of a feminine application. Uh, but more information is known. If you have been a long-term user of uh, baby powder, you certainly may wish to consult with your physician about what risk you might um, be subject to and uh, testing that can potentially be done. Of course, genetic factors and other predispositions for cancer are always an issue. As we look at these uh, situations, the main thing is that consumers need to have the information so that they can make an informed choice for, for themselves and their family, their children and their babies as to whether or not they want to use what is, you know, seems, seems like a harmless product, but in fact is a mineral which, ex, which contains magnesium and asbestos on their application and on their naked body. This is something that consumers have the right to know about and these large medical companies do not have a right to conceal the information that they have internally. Exactly. And as, as we've often discussed, it's not the fact that a product does something bad. It's that the company knew about it and made the conscious decision to not inform people, to not warn people, to not change their practices or their product. And that's when they run into legal trouble is when they know about a problem, they do not inform people and they let them continue to be injured. Um, David Haynes, uh, this exact reason is why, why people like you are out there every day fighting these fights, holding corporations accountable and, and, and seeking justice for those that have been harmed. So we appreciate everything you do, uh, both in the courtroom and on this TV show. So thank you very much for talking with us today about this very important product. Thank you for bringing attention to this story, Farron. Thank you.